Stop! Step back. I do not desire your death. I'm sorry. Why? Why have you done this? But for you. For us. So that we may live free at last. This makes no sense. Constantine, it's madness. You don't understand because you're still attached to the old world. This old, dying world which, to survive, has betrayed, used, and manipulated us and would not have hesitated to kill us. Perhaps, but I've seen death, cousin. And I understood the vanity of it all. My father's ruses just so he could earn more power. The political bowing and scraping to preserve corrupted nations. I have been offered unrivaled power, allowing me to get rid of this, to send the old world back to its inevitable death, and to build something new here, something unique. And this new world is my gift to you. You and I could be its new gods, the immortal and benevolent monarchs. He himself is the incarnation of the old world he is speaking of. He has its vices and its poison. For his own immortality, he's prepared to destroy everything around him, to break millennia of cycles. I implore you, flesh of my land, think of all the lives that will come to an end to feed his pride. Don't listen to this old god. He's like all the others, after all, clinging to life. All you have to do is to bind yourself here, with me. And we will be gods together, forever. After the fall of Constantine, my young student managed to establish stronger links between the old nations and the natives. Some of their Donegada were even invited to the continent, and with their help, it slowly became a land filled with life again. And for the first time in a long while, the number of cases of the Malachor is decreasing. Those who bravely fought at Dorhad Genadu were celebrated everywhere. After all, if it weren't for this unlikely alliance, the island would have fallen into Constantine's greedy hands. Zieglinder took Kurt as an advisor, but he insisted on keeping his place alongside his former student and friend, watching his back, as he always had. Siora obtained the title of Marl of the Red Spears, alongside her twin. She leads them with wisdom, but often reunites with the one she still calls her Karantz. Afra set aside her weapons and went back to her research on the native culture and flora of the island. It is said that she is even writing a book with the help of Dunkas's clan when not visiting her friends. For his bravery, Vasco was awarded the rank of commander. He now travels the sea at the head of a whole fleet, 
but he often comes back to visit his brother in arms. Petrus's ambitions have finally been fulfilled. He obtained the much coveted title of Cardinal. Despite the responsibilities implied by such a title, he still sometimes visits the one he calls his child. Despite the help Ulan received, which allowed him to restore the importance of the seaside Nemeus, he still had to renounce the role of Marl as he faced the contempt of the other clans. Her friendship with her Anaixe helped Deirdre to overcome her reticence. She willfully accepted to follow the orders of her new High King. Duncas and his people spent a lot of time with savants and theologians. Patiently, they shared their knowledge of the Earth and learnt new techniques from one another. And in so doing, they restored balance between the New World and the Old. Following the investigations revealing the horrifying practices of Dr. Asili, the Alliance changed their methods and even appointed an ethics council to oversee the work of its scholars. The public revelations of St. Matthias's life led to a deep change in Teleme. The Ordo Luminis was dismantled for good, and the missionary's purpose is now to establish dialogue rather than conversion. Aware that their culture of secrets would lead them to their demise, the Norts changed their methods. They welcomed numerous new recruits amongst them, notably natives. Under Zieglander's control, the guard returned to the honorable values that had made its reputation. And they did so all the more easily, now that their shadiest members were out of the picture.